<laughs> you know, just because there's a huge power outage and no one's got anything, any electricity. Mm -hmm. It's not a reason to starve. Wood fired, baby. Uh, power outage blog number something. It's day two. Uh, we, we've been out of power for about uh, 36, 40 hours now, something like that. And uh, I'm figuring out my solar battery bank is uh, either rather crap or my fridge is incredibly inefficient because I'm almost out of power now. I tried to run the coffee maker on on the solar and uh, it's a 1.5 kilowatt unit it's within the ratings on the inverter but it's uh, it wouldn't have it the battery voltage dropped down to 42 volts and uh, the inverter shot down so I've turned the fridge and freezer off and I'm hoping I'm gonna be fine for a while just running like small stuff like light and circulation pump. So there's a battery voltage 40. Oh I have 46 volts now, yeah. We're not doing good. We're not doing good on that front. Really I had expected more many more days of backup power. Game of that. Generally the load has been rather low. If we have a look at the inverter. Zero watts one hundred and ninety eight VA. What? What the... Okay, well that's my problem. I have some incredibly horrible thing connected up which just uses a shit ton of uh, reactive power and uh, that's just uh, lost. Ah, uh, well that's great. Well, uh, that's the answer as to why everything's gone so bad. I want to just check that we actually have that bad voltage and not just a bad connection or something, but I'm going to wager 12.5 of that one. Yeah, 12.14 I think that bank is not connected. 11.55 yeah, we're not doing good. We are not doing good. We do have these somewhat charged batteries, four of them, I think they might be workable. I think I might be able to get these guys in service in a pinch. If my meter would live, come on. Okay, never mind. They're garbage. Lost course. That one's got a bad cell, so yeah, fuck it. Very spares around, properly charged. But uh, still, even just running right of a limit, I need to find out what the horrible reactive load is and uh, uh, get that fixed up. I've been cooking a bunch of food for people since apparently wood fired stoves are rather rare and I'm becoming quite the expert at making pizza in them. The radiator's working fine though. We have a decent amount of warmth coming out of that. It's like 30 C almost 25, something like that. And we're keeping a nice 10 degrees in here, which doesn't sound like a lot, but uh, if not for the heater, uh, yeah, that would be closer to the outside temperature. Now, good news, we have got an internet back, so they're moving closer with repairs, but it's rather late. I know it's 7 in the evening, so I don't think we're going to get here tonight, but I might just have to bail and find some other place to spend the night. There are, there are spotted people who have power. We're one of the last six thousand without power, so it's not so bad. The electricity company has been doing a good job. Uh, but my uh, cold is really getting to me. There we go. Another pizza going. 
Till next time. Uh, power outage blog something. So it's about nine in the evening now. Uh, it's becoming quite clear uh, that uh, we're not going to be getting any power back today. Uh, I was expecting that and I thought I'd sized my energy needs according to that but uh, since Eva I completely failed or my battery bank is just complete garbage I don't think I'm gonna be able to really <coughs> stay here because we're down to 45 volts there and it's really my fault I should this bank I'm quite sure it does have enough power to last about a week with the stuff I needed to do but uh, I never checked my idle consumption we have two amps going into this inverter right now with some stuff running oh, that's probably been significantly higher oh, that still comes out as uh, let's see it just reads it as zero watts zero VA so this thing isn't quite accurate enough but yeah we were probably seeing double that with a huge reactive load we had going going before and we have that going for about a day and a half it shouldn't have made all that much of a difference so I, something's obviously not been working quite right in the bank uh, I think we're quite low on capacity these batteries need some attention but uh, after this I'm quite sure if I call around some telecoms they're gonna have a few more failed batteries for me since uh, this extended power outage when these happen they always find out which stations have one bad battery and then they swap the lot so I can probably get my hands on some fresh batteries I did figure out what caused the huge reactive uh, wasted power and that's that uh, uh, the, the, the inverter actually acts as a UPS for workshop as well and uh, something on this power lead has a horrible power factor <laughs> oh no, this guy actually and I have like a network switch and a, I think a bunch of stuff that you're, that you're sitting on standby on this but yeah, since we're probably bailing anyway let's just see what happens if we plug that in and check out power consumption again I'm almost betting that we're gonna have a much higher standby power consumption now we're probably back to the 200 VA idle since the network switch and all those PCs and what have you are still going so Oh, back of the Oh no. So now we have zero VA, okay. So something must have been on. 2.2 amps instead of 2 flat, so yeah. Something must have completely tripped up on that power cord. I'm going to disconnect it again since. Oh, I don't need my network switch running when I've actually turned off my modem as well since uh, we do get internet back for a little while which is very useful for checking status on the power grid and generally wasting time <sighs> but yeah it went away again so it probably I don't know if the batteries had recovered in the station for a little bit and it just decided to turn on for like an hour and then turn off again once it had depleted the surface, the surface charge it had gotten back this stove is also a bit weird because it has this odd switch here I don't, I'm not sure what that thing does it moves a big vent there but it seems to have a big effect on like how the heat gets rated I had some of the other position of the water was down to like 23C and now it's getting back up to 25 so yeah 
it can do about 30 C if the switch is in the right place. Oh, I feel like garbage if the switch is in the right position, but since I've left it after cooking in the wrong position, we we're basically out of heat upstairs. And we're gonna be out of power in like a few hours anyway. 46 volts we're averaging under 12 volts per battery and I don't wanna run them completely flat if I don't have to. And regardless, it's a bit of a shame. So the stove is actually heating the chimney a fair bit so if we uh, heat a thermometer let's make it so you can see that so for thermometer the chimney there we have like 30 degrees over 30 and even if we move upstairs we can probably see this wall here yeah, 19 C so this is all the way above ambient. So it is actually heating the house using a direct heating. 13 C, that's above ambient, ambient light. Let's check the floor. 9.5, yeah, that's pretty accurate. I think we have yeah, 9.7 going there since the heat has not been doing well. What do we have? On the intake side here, just about 20 C getting up here, so we, we do have like 10 degree above ambient coming through, the sneakers feel a warm breeze, but regardless, my bedroom has an issue when it comes to this, because uh, the chimney is right there, this here is the chimney. And yeah, we can't really see. Oh wow, it's actually rather cool now. Eight degree. Last night, this room was actually heating up a bit because it's yeah we have some heat in here because it's sitting right above a chimney. Yeah, 13, 14 degrees for this entire wall. So this room is considerably warmer. Well, I say that. 6C over there. Okay, perhaps this room isn't that much warm, but it feels warm since we have just a tiny bit of heat radiating from there. But my bedroom is this door. So, I'm basically as far away from the chimney as you can get on these upstairs bedrooms. And since the house is just such a huge mess right now, I can't easily move any beds and stuff around so yeah let's have we just thermal gun we have 5c 5c in here that seems a bit low yeah 5c 5c on all surfaces so yeah this is what I'm gonna be waking up in tomorrow and I don't feel like quite doing that <laughs> with a cold Ugh. so yeah I'm gonna have to jump ship on this I am so disappointed rip modem by the way that thing might have some residual heat no 7c none of that's even warm anymore yeah I'm disappointed in my battery bank I thought I'd have considerably more to play with when it comes to that. I mean we do still have power for basic stuff but uh, any high power appliance like the microwave or the coffee maker made coffee manually cooking it on the stove it turned out quite nice and uh, the frozen pizzas I cooked in the wood fired stove have been some of the best I've ever had but yeah, we're soon going to be down to only the, like, the uh, stove with no electricity whatsoever, save for small battery powered, powered appliances and like a couple spare batteries so I can have yeah, a couple lights perhaps 
keep the circulation running but just charging a laptop from those is a bit iffy I still don't even have internet and I had to turn off my server so I don't even have any movies and stuff my prime source of entertainment has just been sitting here putting wood in the eye wood in the stove listening to audiobooks for hours upon hours which is quite nice actually it's, it's very nice but looking at this room we're not going to be able to fit a bed in here quite unusual this is the warmest room in the house we have like that thing says 17c but it's going to be a bit more since that's just by the cool breeze of the door then it's probably about 20 in here it's really nice and comfortable so heat wise we're actually not doing too poor if I could only fit a bed here without uh, causing complete mayhem we'd be set but alas that's not happening so I'm jumping ship we tried we, we made it for about about 48 hours without power and I've not been too energy economical so I'm quite happy with that that's decent emergency prep uh, without having a diesel or gas generator or anything I will keep the house warm I, I, I'm, I'm not I'm not unhappy with the way things have turned out like all things considered none of my stuff is made to handle extended power outages but we clearly have so I'm gonna have to uh, thank you for watching and uh, make sure you enjoy yourself in your nice cozy warm internet enabled house bye